Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the statement of cash flows, an important topic on the CPA exam as well as your intermediate accounting course. Do not take the CPA exam if you are not 100% comfortable with the statement of cash flows because under, understanding the statement of cash flows would also help you understand converting cash to accrual, another important topic on the exam. So you don't want to go into the exam not comfortable converting from accrual to cash, which is the statement of cash flow, or cash to accrual. Both are extremely important and the reason is simple. In the real world, most companies, the, the number of companies that use cash accounting and want to convert is more than companies that strictly use the statement of cash flows. Because most small companies, which is the majority of companies in terms of number of companies that you, you are going to be helping when you work in a CPA firm, uses cash method. So they, you have to go from cash to accrual, and obviously all companies will have to prepare the statement of cash flows. So the topic is extremely important. Now, if you're a CPA candidate studying for your CPA exam or an accounting student, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. That's something for you to keep. I can be a useful addition. How? I can explain the material in details, different than your CPA review course. And you will see in this session how I'm going to go over this example in detail, showing you all the steps and helping you understand the concept. If you understand this problem that I'm going to go over today, then you will have a strong understanding of the statement of cash flows. And I can assure you, you can answer any multiple choice question or a simulation that it comes to the statement of cash flows. Now, this is only one exercise. I do have the statement of cash flow explained in details, the direct method, the indirect method, so on and so forth. Your risk is one month of subscription. Try it. If it helps you, keep it. If not, cancel. That's your risk. One month of subscription. Your potential return is passing the CPA exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources and lecture for other courses, such as intermediate accounting. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And take a look at recommendations. Students that took my uh, took my subscription and used it, used my resources to pass the exam, then see if it's see if it helped them and see how it helped them. Please connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Now let's take a look at the statement of cash flows. To complete a complete statement of cash flows, you have to have two years of balance sheet, which we have here. You have to have an income statement, and you might have also additional information. So this I'm, I'm going to treat this as a simulation, a big simulation, most likely on the exam. You will not be giving that that large of a simulation in my opinion you might be given you might be asked to complete a portion of the statement of cash flow if it's the whole thing it may not be as involved as this one it could be but if you can go over this you will be fine so so here's the the year one or 2016 and year two so on the exam you might you may not see a year you might see year one and year two Okay, or sometimes you may not see year one and year two. They might give you the beginning balance and the ending balance, and those are the beginning balance year one and the ending balance is year two. So, so you have to be careful how the information is given to you because you need to interpret it. You need to interpret it and apply it within a problem. So you are giving the balance sheet, additional information, one, a fully depreciated plant assets which originally cost twenty thousand and had a salvage value, and had no salvage value was sold for a thousand dollar so here we are told that one of the assets one of the plant assets were sold originally cost twenty thousand no salvage value we sold it for a thousand now number one will affect our uh, there's three sections operating investing and financing it will it's going to affect our investing section because we are dealing with plant asset so you want to know read the instruction first the additional information to find out if there's anything given to you that's going to complement what's in the balance sheet and the income statement two bonds were issued at par value two-thirds of the bond were exchanged for land the remaining one-third is for cash so we have to be careful here because we issued bond bond is financing and we bought land, land is investing. So notice here that it affects two, two parts of the balance, uh, two parts of the statement of cash flow. Common stock was sold for cash. Easy, that's a financing transaction. The only entries in the retained earning are for dividend paid in the amount of 10,000 and for net income for the year. That's fine. So that's gonna be financing. 
Normal depreciation expense was recorded during the year and the franchise was amortized. They're giving us additional information about depreciation and amortization. Now we are ready to prepare the statement of cash flow, starting with the operating section. When we're looking at the operating section, there are several, I would say, several steps you have to go through. I'm going to list the steps for you. And in my lecture, I go through those steps and details. What is the operating statement of cash flow? What's the idea? The idea is to take net income, this net income here, and convert this net income into a cash, in quote, net income. So the key is to convert your net income accrual into cash net income. How do we do so? Well, we're going to start by net income. We're going to start with net income. I would say this is step one. First, you start with net income, and you're going to start the conversion. Step two, this is step one. Step two, I would say add non-cash expenses. This is step two. Step two is add non-cash expenses. What are non-cash expenses? For example, depreciation is a non-cash expense. Amortization, bad debt expense. And any expense... Any expense that you debit an expense and you credit something that's non-cash, like depreciation, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, amortization, debit amortization expense, credit the asset or credit amortization expense, depends, depending on how the company use it, bad debt expense, debit, debit bad debt expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So this is step two. Step three, if you have any gains, deduct any gains and if you have any losses add the losses this is step three so we have step one is pretty easy start starting with net income step two add non-cash expenses step three deduct the gains and add the losses and once we get to this we'll explain the concept a little bit for a little bit further step four step four is analyze current assets and current liabilities. And this will take a little bit more of work. Once we get to it, we'll analyze it. So the operating section, in my opinion, there are four steps, starting with net income. Net income is easy. Here's net income for you. Net income, 26,000. Now I'm gonna make certain adjustments. I'm gonna adjust net income to come up with my ca cash net income or operating section. Okay, what's a step one? We said step one, a step one is done. Step two is Add depreciation, amortization, any bad debt expense. If we look here, they're not listed explicitly. Those numbers are not listed explicitly. Well, what does that mean? It means you have to come up with these figures. Well, starting, then what do you do? If, if depreciation and amortization is not giving, then you have to figure them out. What does it mean, figure them out? It means you have to find out what happened from the balance sheet information. How would you find this out? How can you find what happened from the balance sheet information? You have to analyze the numbers. You have to analyze the figures in order to come up with that number. Okay, starting with amortization. We see that the franchise account went from 32 to 24. It means, and we did not sell anything, so simply put, the franchise account we, we happen to have amortized a thousand this is pretty straightforward why because the account went from 32 to 24 it, it means this company they will debit amortize expense and they will credit franchise and the amount was in total of eight thousand now notice this is an expense but we did not credit cash this is a non-cash expense therefore we have to add eight thousand dollar to the twenty six thousand because what happened is inside this operating expense inside of this fifty nine thousand there were eight thousand dollar that was non-cash expense it means we deducted net income we reduced net income <coughs> sorry it means we reduced our net income by 8000 but we did, we did not pay it in cash. Now let's take a look at accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Accumulated depreciation we have to analyze this account along <coughs> Sorry about that. We have to analyze this account along our uh, along property plant and equipment so this is what we're going to do we're going to do accumulated depreciation you are giving the beginning balance 
the beginning beginning balance is 86 and the ending balance is 80,000 that's what you are giving that's what you are giving here's what you are told you remember in letter one in, uh, in number one this one here you are told that an asset was sold and the original cost was 20,000 and it was fully depreciated when we sell an asset when we get rid of an asset, we get rid of any accumulated depreciation. It means we debited accumulated depreciation 20,000 when we sold this asset. So simply put, when we sold this asset, what we did is this. We debited accumulated depreciation 20,000. We credit the asset. We credit the asset. Uh, it was sold for 1,000 originally cost 20,000 we credited the asset 20,000 and we sold it for a thousand therefore we debit if you want the full entry we debit cash a thousand and we credit the gain a thousand okay actually let's do this entry because we're going to need it shortly so when we sold this asset let, let's do the entry because it's very important that you see it from the entry perspective from, from an entry perspective we debited cash a thousand we debited accumulated depreciation 20,000 because they told us it was fully depreciated we credited the asset which is plant asset it doesn't matter i'm going to call it plant asset the original cost twenty thousand and we had the gain of a thousand dollar okay because we're going to come up with that gain that's why i dealt I, I wanted to do this so now we started with 86 we reduced the the account 20 but we end up with 80. what does that mean it means we booked depreciation of fourteen thousand it means this was the depreciation expense so on the exam you might have to figure out depreciation expense from the information that's giving i highly doubt it they will give you something like this but you want to be comfortable with this okay so now we figure out depreciation expense so let's complete step two step two we add depreciation expense of fourteen thousand. we add amortization of franchise of eight thousand and those are the what we call them non-cash expenses so we're done let's delete the entries here let's delete the entry so we're done with step one we're done with step two okay now step three step three it says deduct any gains add any losses well we have right in the income statement a gain of a thousand and i showed i showed you where the gain came from a thousand dollar now why do we deduct the gain the gain this one thousand dollar increase our cash by a thousand i'm sorry I apologize increase our ink net income increase this number by a thousand but but that's not that's not an operating that's not an operating activity when you sell an asset that's going to be remember i told you this is part of finance therefore what we have to do it increase our net income without increasing our cash for operating purposes therefore we deduct it and the same thing apply for a loss if we sell something for a loss we add the loss because the loss reduce net income without reducing our cash for operating purposes therefore step three is a, a deduct we deduct the gain of a thousand so we're done with step three so step one two and three are done so let me erase them step one two and three are done now let's look at step four what do we do in step four step four we're going to analyze current assets and current liabilities to determine how do they affect cash now obviously we don't use cash because we're trying to explain this difference so you know we don't touch cash starting with account receivable we see that we see that account receivable went up from 74 to 79 well if a current asset goes up it means you deduct from a cash flow perspective why because you are selling more on account you sold five thousand more therefore you deduct if a current asset goes down it means it's a positive to cash flow so copy this for these formulas down it doesn't have to be current asset any asset same concept except obviously cash so there we go now let's 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 analyze prepaid prepaid also went up prepaid went up it means we are buying prepaid it means from a cash perspective it's negative the difference is six thousand i'm sorry uh inventory first not prepaid inventory and prepaid also went up negative a thousand so notice we all all my all our prepaid went up all our prepaid went up as a result i'm not all prepaid all the current assets happen to go up happens to go up they could go down too if they go up it's a negative to cash flow now we're done with 
current assets. Let's take a look at our current liabilities. For current liabilities, I'm going to switch colors. For current liabilities, every time our current liabilities goes up, it's good for us. For cash flow, it means we are not using the cash. We are using other people's money. Every time the current liability goes down, it means a negative cash flow because when, the, when does your current liability goes down is when you pay it. It means you are paying cash. So notice for current liabilities, they work the same way. Current liabilities up, cash flow up. Current liabilities down, cash flow down. Let's take a look at our accounts payable. Our accounts payable went up. That's positive. Increase our accounts payable of 12000 Now what we do is we net not we net first we add the yeah we net them out the net is 21000 positive now we can figure out our net income on a cash flow basis which is called net cash provided because it's positive be, be careful on the exam provided versus used this is not cash provided by operating expenses so simply put from a net income perspective they only made 26000 but from a cash perspective they made 47 and the reason is simple they had 14000 of depreciation 8000 of amortization you know their current assets consumed some some cash but their they used some debt as well to operate their business therefore overall net cash provided by operating activities is 47000 we are done with the first section of the cash flow statement the second section now by the way this is the indirect method now in the next session i will work you the direct method the same example but i will work the direct method okay the direct method now, now we're going to look at the fine, uh, investing section. Investing comes first. Investing deals with your uh, assets, plant assets, land, all that stuff. Okay. Now we know that we purchase land because we go from zero to eighty-six thousand. Well, if if that if that's the only information we have, if that's the only information we have, we would say that well, we paid eighty-six thousand dollar for land. That's what we say. However, that's not the only information we are giving. Remember, we were giving additional information. Under the additional information, we were told that land was purchased. We issued a bond in land, uh, and the bond was issued for the land. So we did not really pay cash. So we took out the loan, and we took the land. Therefore, we did not really pay any cash for the land itself. We did not pay any cash for the land itself. But we sold an asset plant asset for a thousand dollar and received a thousand dollar therefore cash from investing activities sale of a plant asset of a thousand dollar okay now we're not done yet we have to analyze plant asset this account here this account here let's analyze it because you have to analyze your plant asset because you have to determine whether something is purchased or not plant asset we started with two hundred twenty four thousand we end up with 279,000. Clearly, our plant asset went up. But also, we know that we sold 20,000 of plant asset. Okay, so notice what we have to do. We have to analyze the plant asset account to determine what was the increase in plant asset. So, what is 224 minus 20,000 equal to 279? And the answer is it means we purchased $75,000 worth of assets. How did I find this out? I had to analyze plant asset. I had to analyze the account. I'm told that I sold 20,000 and let me just confirm and uh, let me compute this and confirm the computation 224 plus 75 minus 20 equal to 279. So you want to confirm this. Okay, so notice I did confirm that indeed I purchased 75 worth of assets. I'm done. I'm, I accounted for plant asset. I accounted for land. I'm done with in the investing section. The investing section, I consumed, used. Notice the difference between the terminology used. Be careful on the exam. Select the word used when you are doing this. So we are done also with the investing section. We're done with the investing section. What's left is the financing section. The financing section is how you finance yourself, basically through debt and equity. And we do have some additional information about debt and equities. Now we're going to start with the financing section, the third section of the statement of cash flow. We sold 35,000 worth of stocks, and this is clearly showing here. This is the common stock. We started with 250, went to 275. We started with 46, went to 56. And we are told we issued the stocks for cash. Therefore, sale from the sale of stock is 35,000, clearly. Sale of the bond. Remember, here, all what they say 
here's 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 why this I like this exercise because it's giving you the information indirectly. Bonds payable were issued at par. Okay, so bonds payable, we did not have anything. We 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 issued 129. Uh, they were exchanged for land. That means part of this 129 went for land. And we know from our balance sheet, land was 86,000. So of this amount, 86,000 went through land. Well, if 86,000 went through land, and they're giving us the ratio, but even we don't have to know the, even the ratio. If 129 went to land minus 86,000, what's left in cash is 43,000. Therefore, sale of the bond equal to 43,000. We sold 129 worth of bonds. 86 went to land, which is it's not cash. We purchased land for it. It's a non-cash activity. Oops, it's non-cash activity. Therefore, what's left is 43. Now, if you want to take 129 times one third, that's fine. 129, one third went, was cash, and two third was for the land. That's fine too. Okay, so we're done with this. Uh, notes payable, we are giving a notes payable. It was 63, went down to 58. Uh, sorry, before, oh, let's do the dividend first. Okay, now, uh, we have to figure out the dividend amount because what we are told in number four, the entries in the retained earning are dividend paid for 10, for 10. Oh, they're, they're already given us the dividend. Okay, but here we go. They may not give you the dividend. Let's assume they all what they told you on the problem because I'm going to say the only entries in the retained earning are for dividend paid and net income for the year. So if you are not giving this information, here's what you have to do. You say my retained earning started at 29 end up at 45 my net income was 26 so how much dividend did i pay so they may not give you the dividend itself okay so if i take 29 plus 26 minus something equal to 45 that something must have been 10,000 okay so notice they may not give you the dividend here they gave you the dividend so this make it easier for you so 29 plus 26 minus 10 and you'd say it's 45 i confirm my answer so the dividend is 10,000. Now i also issued it seems i paid off a note 63 went to 58 i paid 5,000 of my note notice here it went from 63 to 58 i'm practically done with my net cash provided so it means i brought in cash from financing now i net operating financing and investing with the net income Net increase in net increase, so I know I net this out 26 plus 47 minus 74 plus 63. It means there was an increase in cash of 36,000. I'm going to take this increase, add it to my beginning cash of 62,000. It should give me 98,000 my ending cash. And this is the statement of cash flow from A to Z using the indirect method. Now, you re and there was a non-cash investing and financing of 86,000. This is non-cash. Non it means, you know, you, you, you bought an asset and you issued stocks or bonds, but you did not really get the cash. And that's 86,000. This is part of the two-thirds of the bond were exchanged for the land. Non-cash. It's called non-cash investing and financing. So you have to understand this statement of cash flow inside out in order to be comfortable and ready to take the CPA exam. Do not take the CPA exam if you are not ready with the statement of cash flow. I can help you. Four Hat Lectures can help you understand this concept inside out. My material will, will mirror image your CPA review course. So when, when they cover the cash flow, I cover the cash flow. If you want to understand this better, have more confidence, check out my website, fourhatlectures.com. I can help you tremendously. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your CPA is a long-term investment in your career. Take it seriously, study hard, good luck, and of course, stay safe.